Good afternoon. I am Richard Saxer, a member of the Atlas Foundation of Louisiana and Trinity Episcopal Church in New Orleans. Thank you for joining this interfaith prayer service during the coronavirus pandemic. During these tragic days of the pandemic, it seems like everyone in the world is suffering or knows someone else who is suffering from disease, death, separation, financial hardship. The pandemic shows how closely everyone around the world is interrelated. It shows how very much we all, all of us around the world need each other and our creator. And so as people of faith, we pray. We pray, we pray that we all may be one, united in prayer during the pandemic. We pray for God's help. During this service, 13 leaders from different faith traditions will briefly offer prayers and reflections that help, that seek help from the Almighty. The service is being recorded and is live on YouTube Live. The names of our participants and their prayers and their offerings will be available there on YouTube Live as well. I will introduce each of them in order. We will now proceed this, with the service without interruption. Father Buddy Noel. Father Buddy Noel is with the Ecumenical and Interreligious Office of the Archdiocese of New Orleans and is a pastor, Father Buddy Noel. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to focus on the origin of this prayer and uh, then I'll offer the first prayer. Atlas Foundation sponsoring our prayer this afternoon is an organization founded locally in New Orleans in 2001 by a Roman Catholic and a Turkish Muslim. We are focused on interfaith dialogue education offering a warm welcome to all. Recently, one of our Atlas board members, Fevzi Saraj, a Muslim from Turkey, was reading the Gospel of John as part of a study group. Atlas, incidentally, also has a Quran study group with Christians as part of our interfaith efforts. Fevzi was impressed with a passage in the Gospel in which Jesus, in a prayer to God, desires that all believers be one. May they all be truly one, the text says. This passage inspired him and other members of Atlas to begin planning this prayer time, entitled, May They All Be One, Interfaith Prayer During the Pandemic. In this prayer time, we wish to ask God's blessings on our Muslim brothers and sisters who today begin the holy month of Ramadan, and to our Jewish and Christian friends who have recently celebrated Passover and Easter. May all people of faith truly be one as we pray together. First prayer is a prayer that was offered in the U.S. House of Representatives by Father Patrick Conroy, a Jesuit priest, on April 7th, 2020. God of mercy, thank you for giving us another day. Your desire is for our wholeness and well-being. We implore you to be with us through the collective suffering of our world at this time. We grieve precious lives lost and vulnerable lives threatened and ache for ourselves and our neighbors standing before an uncertain future. May love, not fear, go viral. Inspire the members of this people's house to discern and choose wisely under conditions which render good function of government even more difficult. May their efforts be aligned with the common good. Help us to practice show social distancing and all other methods of safe interaction while we strive to find new and creative ways to come together in spirit and in solidarity. In such a difficult time, help us to put our trust in you. May everything done this day be for your greater honor and glory. 
Amen. Thank you. Our next speaker is Reverend Corey Sparks. Reverend Corey Sparks is the pastor of St. Mark's United Methodist Church in New Orleans. Reverend Corey Sparks. Thank you, Reverend Corey Sparks. Our next speaker is President David Hall. President David Hall is the stake president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in New Orleans, President David Hall. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this wonderful interfaith service. I want to share a scripture with you, Isaiah 54, 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. How much mercy doth the Lord have for us this day and every day? And as we continue to, to press forward, with these difficult times, with these unique times. May we continue to remember the Lord as he remembers us. And at this time, I'll offer in prayer. Our kind and gracious Father in heaven, how grateful we are for the many blessings thou hast provided upon thy people. We're grateful for thy son, Jesus Christ, for his love and his example, for his atonement that allows us to return back to thee, that allows us to repent, to find joy and be happy. We are grateful for the wonderful people of this city and of this state, and those who strive to make things better we're grateful for the medical professionals, for the politicians, for those who are making decisions and helping the citizens of this area to stay safe. We are grateful for the wonderful healthcare workers and all that their all their sacrifice to care for those who are in need. Father, we pray for thy mercy, for thy peace and comfort at this time. We pray for thy Holy Spirit to be upon us, that we can be guided to know what thou would have us to do, how we can improve, how we can continue to strive to be like thee. We pray, Father, for those who continue to serve, that thou wouldst bring them comfort and peace in their lives. 
to watch over their families, to help them to, to be strong, to have good mental health, physical health. That thou wouldst watch over the, the scientists and doctors and those who are striving to find a cure, to find a solution. We pray that life may be normalized that we can continue to do those things that would help us to bring us closer to thee, to serve thee, to serve our community. We humbly ask that thou would bless all the people of this area to continue to uplift them, to help them to understand and come out of their struggles and to fill of thy everlasting love. We pray for these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, President David Hall. President David Hall is the stake president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in New Orleans. Thank you, President David Hall. Reverend Gregory Manning. Pastor Gregory Manning is the Lutheran pastor of the Broadmoor Community Church in New Orleans. Pastor Gregory Manning. Good afternoon, everyone. It is uh, certainly a joy and a privilege to join with uh, fellow faith leaders um, and to do this awesome, have this awesome privilege of praying for our nation, our cities, um, our families and friends. Um, what a joy it is to have this format on which to do that want to share you uh, share with you a brief word from my faith tradition, the Bible. Uh, this word is uh, found in the book of Micah, the prophet, the fourth chapter, and it is at the fourth verse. It says, but each man will sit under his own grapevine and under his own fig tree with no one to frighten him. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has promised this. I've been looking at that word and thinking about the fact that many people are dealing with anxiety and trauma and fear. And we all need a place where we have a moment of, of solace and a moment uh, to just draw back from everyone and everything. <clears throat> and to call upon the Lord. And so as the Holy Scripture says, the Bible says that each one will have his own place, his own to sit under his own fig tree or his own grapevine, to meditate, to have peace, to understand that they are covered, protected, and safe. And so um, that is my prayer for each one today. Let's pray, Father, Creator, Almighty God, we come before you, God, on this awesome day. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are so glad, God, that you have given each of us breath in our body, that you've given us will and strength and motivation to be able to do this great work, to lift one another up in prayer. God, that we are have this commonality at this moment, no matter what may try to divide us, God, we're united in this function and we thank you, oh God. God, the word is certain and true that we desire justice and we desire that each one would have his own place. That, 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 whether, that the word says, calls it a grapevine or a fig tree, God, but we know it is shelter, God. We know it is that place in a garden, that place of hope, that place of assuredness that everything is going to be okay. So Lord God, we lift up those right now who are plagued with depression and plagued with anxiety and plagued with worry, God, that you would allow them to have a calmness fall over them right now. God, that you would touch them and meet them right where they are. God, that you would step into the room, step into their hospital room, step into their homes, step into their place, God, where they find comfort and are able to meditate on the goodness of the Lord, that through him all things are possible. And God, your word says that the Lord of hosts has promised this. So God, we ask on today that as those on this call would sit in silence, as they would take walks, as they would sleep at night and rest, 
God, and as they go along each day with carrying on business and caring, caring for their families and their children and trying to work, God, that you would meet them right where they are, that you would make them a promise, whisper in their ear, that you would touch them in a way and let them know that there is a day when this too shall pass, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So God, meet them in that spot. Give them a blessing of peace and solidarity and hopefulness and joy to hold on until tomorrow when things will change again. So God, until that time, help us to comfort each other, allow each other to have that place of solace. Lord God, we, we lift up all those struggling with the coronavirus and we ask you for healing, God, for each one and that you would allow this plague to pass from us and that you would have mercy upon us. We ask it in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Manny. The Reverend John Pitzer. Father John Pitzer is an Episcopal priest and the Associate Rector of Trinity Episcopal Church in New Orleans. Father John Pitzer. Thank you, Richard. Um, it is truly an honor to be here with all of these leaders from different faiths as we pray for our world. I was having a conversation with a friend recently, and we both said that it seems that everyone is looking for something good to happen. And I learned very, uh, very early on in my life from my mother and my father that um, every situation has a silver lining, that good can come from every single situation. And it is my prayer that as we continue through this pandemic and hopefully sooner rather than later, um, reach a, a place where we are back to semi-normal, um, that the good things that we might see are maybe a new respect for nurses and doctors and people on the front line, that people will continue to be kind to one another as it seems that they are doing at this moment. So many good things can come from this. One of the good things are the silver linings is the gathering of faith leaders like we are doing at this moment women and men of faith from different faiths that get together to pray for our world. So the prayer I would like to leave you with, there are many beautiful prayers in the Anglican tradition. Uh, this one comes from our Book of Common Prayer in the Episcopal Church. Uh, the title of this prayer is For the Human Family. Oh God, you made us in your own image. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father John. <clears throat> Rabbi Matthew Reamer. Rabbi Matthew Reamer is the Director of Community Engagement of the Jewish Community Center in Brooklyn, New York. Rabbi Matthew Reamer. My dear friends and colleagues, it's an honor and a privilege to be with each of you. Ma'aruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Ozer Yisrael Each and every morning, we Jews recite our Nassim B'chol Yom, our daily miracles, thanking God for the tiny, often looked over moments that take place throughout the day, waking up and opening up our eyes, being able to stretch, getting out of bed. Ozer Yisrael allows us to recognize that at times we wake up with anxiety, with fear, with confusion. Our rabbis recognized this and wrote a prayer thanking God for girding each of us with strength, with purpose, with the ability to get out of bed despite those fears and push forward little by little, bit by bit. By reciting this courage blessing, we hope to encourage ourselves, to give ourselves the strength to face anything that may frighten us or make us feel at risk. Throughout our history, this blessing was often thought of in a national or collectivist way, as an expression of our undaunted determination to survive. At the same time, it is easy and in fact encouraged 
to turn the blessing into a personal expression of hope and striving for inner strength. The need for courage is a daily need as fundamental as our daily need for food and air. In our daily lives, we operate most of the time on autopilot with a set of array of attitudes and perspectives toward our surroundings and toward the greater world and its challenges. We get involved in certain things and we avoid others. We go to certain places and avoid others. We interact with certain people and yes, avoid others. When we become aware of unsettling events or situations like where we find ourselves at this very moment, the courage blessing operates on the individual and on the collective level. It can be meaningful for a person confronting a personal challenge. And it can also be meaningful for an entire people. When the challenge of courageous decision-making is placed before us, the two dimensions of the prayer, the personal and the collective, come together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, ozer Yisrael begevorah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, you, who gives each of us the courage to get out of bed, to go to work on the front lines, to homeschool our precious children, to have hope, to be safe, to wash our hands, to live our lives. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Ms. Sarah Houston. Ms. Sarah Houston is a member of the Baha'i community in New Orleans. Ms. Sarah Houston. Thank you. This is a prayer from the Baha'i scriptures. In the name of God, the Lord of overpowering majesty, the all compelling, hallowed be the Lord in whose hand is the source of dominion. He createth whatsoever he willeth by his word of command be, and it is. He hath been the power of authority heretofore and it shall remain his hereafter. He maketh victorious whomsoever he pleaseth through the potency of his behest. He is in truth the powerful, the almighty. Unto him pertaineth all glory and majesty in the kingdoms of revelation and creation and whatever lies between them. Verily he is the potent, the all glorious. From everlasting he hath been the source of indomitable strength and shall remain so unto everlasting. He is indeed the Lord of might and power. All of the kingdoms of heaven and earth and whatever is between them are God's and his power is supreme over all things. All the treasures of heaven and earth and everything between them are his and his protection extendeth over all things. He is the creator, creator of the heavens and the earth and whatever lieth between them. And he truly is a witness over all things. He is the Lord of reckoning for all that dwell in the heavens and on the earth and whatever lieth between them. And truly God is swift to reckon. He setteth the measure assigned to all who are in the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them. Verily, he is the supreme protector. He holdeth in his grasp the keys of heaven and earth and of everything between them. At his own pleasure doth he bestow gifts through the power of his command. Indeed, his grace encompasseth all, and he is the all-knowing. Say, God, sufficeth unto me. He is the one who holdeth in his grasp the kingdom of all things. Through the power of his host of heaven and earth, and whatever lieth between them, he protecteth whomsoever among his servants, servants he willeth. God in truth keepeth watch over all things. Immeasurably exalted art thou, O Lord. Protect us from what lieth in front of us and behind us, above our heads, on our right and on our left, below our feet, and every other side to which we are exposed. Verily, thy protection over all things is unfailing. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Ms. Leila Oskan. Ms. Leila Okan is a member of the Atlas Foundation and the Muslim community in Louisiana. Ms. Leila Okan. Hello, uh, I'm so happy to be a part of this moment. I will share with you a passage from Quran in Arabic. Uh, it is from second chapter, uh, word 255, uh, and uh, a few uh, sentences from Prophet Muhammad. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ما ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم اللهم يا حافظ يا حفيظ نعم الحافظ أنت احفظنا من بين أيدينا ومن خلفنا وعن أيماننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعود بعظمتك أن نغتال من تحتنا يا الله يا الله يا الله God, there is no deity but he the all living, the self-subsisting by whom all, all subsist slumber does not seize him nor sleep He's, he is all that is in the heavens and, and all that is on the earth who is there that will intercede with him save by his leave he knows what lies before them and what lies after them what lies in their future and in their past what is known to them and what is hidden from them and they do not compre comprehend anything of his knowledge save what he wills his seat of dominion embraces the heavens and the earth and the preserving of them does not weary him. He is all exalted, the supreme. You are our protector, God. What a beautiful protector you are. Protect us from any evil and harm that may come before us, behind us, right and left us and above us. We also seek refuge in your greatness from being caught by our feet. O oh, our Lord, Oh, our Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ms. Diane Hanley. Ms. Diane Hanley is a member of the Atlas Foundation. She is the executive director of Spirit and Justice and a leader of Together Baton Rouge in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ms. Diane Hanley. Thank you. I too am so grateful to be a part of this gathering. I scoured the scriptures trying to know what it is that needed to be said today. And I was struck by the book of Deuteronomy, which surprised me. But I came to chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30 is a part of the Jewish tradition and the Christian tradition, which also makes it a part of the Abrahamic traditions. I base this prayer on that chapter. Blessings and curses are upon us and we are taking them to heart. Even as we are dispersed and distant one from another. You tell us Lord, source of all love, that your compassion is with us. We can feel it most clearly when we turn to you with our whole heart and soul you gather us to yourself. You open our hearts even more and make us receptive to divine grace and guidance so that we may love you with all our heart and our whole being and thus live more abundantly, more spiritually free. The death of one way of being makes room for a new way of life that you have in mind for us. May this new life extend to our children and all children 
and their children, to the fruit of our womb, to all the works of our hands, and the crops of our land and all of creation. Help us to know, Creator God, that your way of life is not too difficult for us or beyond our reach. It is not up in heaven nor beyond the sea. No, your word is very near. It is already in our mouth and in our heart so that we may live it. Yes, you set before us today life and prosperity, death and destruction by loving you and not turning our hearts away, we will know blessings. But destruction comes by being drawn away to bow down to false gods. This day, you have set before us life and death, blessings and curses. Help us to choose life so that we and those who come after us may live abundantly and that we may love the Lord our God, listen to God's voice, and hold fast to God. For the Lord is our life. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. The Reverend Susan LaSalle. Reverend Susan LaSalle is pastor of Little Farms United Church of Christ in River Ridge, Louisiana. And she is the convener of the East Jefferson Interfaith Clergy Association in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Reverend Susan LaSalle. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be a part of this prayer service with all of you and all of those who are viewing now and will view in the future. I'd like to share a reading. It comes from the Apostle Paul in the letter to the Romans in the Christian New Testament and selected passages from chapter eight. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to God's purpose. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I'd like to offer this prayer. God of creation, God of all of us, we hear you calling us to prayer and we hear you calling us to compassion and to care for those among us who are suffering and those among us who are struggling during this time. We know there are so many in need, but let us not languish that we not, cannot help everyone and rather focus on those that we can help. Oh God, give us mindfulness. Give us mindfulness to see and act upon all the ways that we and our faith communities can tend to others through tangible deeds of love and grace. Our common humanity and our commitment to you, oh God, lead us to live through the time of this pandemic with eyes and hearts and hands wide open seeking ways to live out our faith so as to address the hurting of our world, our community, and our country. We believe that the best way forward is together. So we commit to love one another and to work together, appreciating our diversity of creed, of race, and of faith. Together, we will hope for, pray for, and work for times of health 
and wellness for all. We thank you for one another, God, and for times such as these that compel us to come together again in prayer and service. We pray in the many names of God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Bishop Fernand Cherie, OFM. Bishop Fernand Cherie is an auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Bishop Fernand Cherie. It is very humbling to share this time with so many great and wonderful leaders of our community. I want to thank you for sharing, asking me to be a part of this. As I reflected on the pandemic and the challenges that it has it offered to us and called to us, I thought of the, a song and a prayer. I am healed by the word of God. I am healed by the word of God. Yes, it's already done, just waiting for my change to come. For I know I'm healed by the word of God. Yes, I'm healed by the word of God. I am free by the word of God. I am free by the word of God. Yes, it's already done, waiting for my change to come. But I know I'm healed by the word of God. Yes, I'm free by the word of God. The many prophets of scriptures have taught us over and over again not to fall victim to the woes and challenges of life, but to hang on to that hope that we have in God. And so from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, I share with you this word from God. I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you, to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. Sisters and brothers holding on to this and trusting in God's word, I pray this blessing and prayer upon you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord fill you with kindness and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. We thank everyone who has participated in this service. And we thank all of you who are watching this service and invite your prayers as well. And lastly, we of course thank God for God's love, 
mercy and tender care in the many ways in which we know God and God's tender mercy and care and love. This concludes our service. Please check our postings on Facebook Live. Let us continue to pray for all of God's creation around the world. May everything we do be for God's greater honor and glory. And may God bless us all. Thank you and goodbye.